أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القرآن العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا هل ادلكم على تجاره تنجيكم من عذاب اليم تؤمنون بالله ورسوله وتجاهدون في سبيل الله باموالكم وانفسكم ذلك خير لكم ان كنتم تعلمون صدق الله العظيم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we give thanks to him for all his boons and favors and bounties that he has bestowed upon us. I testify that there is none to be worshipped but Allah. He is alone and he has no partner. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and final messenger. Ibad Allah, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us believers to a beautiful bargain, a profitable trade, a profitable business. And Allah tells us that if we accept it and we are committed to it, then there is no nuqsan or no loss that we will certainly benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, addressing the people of faith, those who say they believe in one God, those who say they believe in prophets, in books, the revealed books, those who say they believe in angels, they believe that there is a day of reckoning, that they will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will give account for their deeds, whatever they have done in this world. Allah is not addressing any and everyone. He is addressing believers, us, people who say they believe. And he says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. Do I invite you to a trade, a business? a bargain that will save you from a severe chastisement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this business, this transaction, if you are involved in it, it will save you from a severe chastisement. هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ And Allah did not say just عذاب that it will be, it will save you from a punishment. But He qualifies it in saying that this punishment is severe. And we know that uh, the punishment in the hereafter with Hellfire, when people will be placed in the hellfire, it is not a simple thing. It is not just an ordinary punishment. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us and saying that, do I invite you to something that can save you from this severe chastisement, this severe punishment? He says, تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Believe in Allah. First thing he asks us to do 
is that we demonstrate our true and committed belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-imanu billah. And what is faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It is just to say, amantu billah, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it just to recognize that there is a God who controls the heavens and the earth, who has created us and created everything? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانِ بِالْتَمَنِّي وَلَكِنْ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ الْعَمَلِ Iman is not a mere wish or hope, but Iman is that which is registered in the heart and it is being approved by the limbs of the body. So, it, it is not just saying, but we must show Iman. We must show faith in our actions. So our eyes should demonstrate Iman by not looking at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made unlawful. Our ears should demonstrate Iman by not listening to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made unlawful. Our tongues should demonstrate Iman by speaking only the, the good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to speak of and should, should not be involved in any indecency in terms of our speech. Our hands should demonstrate Iman in that it should only be touching that which is un that which is lawful and doing that which is lawful. And our feet should demonstrate Iman in that it should only take us to places that is lawful. And th this is how we show true faith or true Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that Iman is not something that you just hope for or you wish for. But you, you say it with your tongue. It is registered in your heart. And you demonstrate it with the limbs of your bodies. And so, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to Iman, to minuna billah, that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we need to demonstrate true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we demonstrate true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we recognize the ever presence and the ever watchfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we refrain from doing anything that is wrong because we know that everything that we do, it is seen and it is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what, how iman, the true iman drives us to behave. And so we believe sincerely that Allah is the master of the day of judgment, that Allah is forgiving and Allah is merciful. And we believe that Allah is shadidul iqab, that he is severe in his punishment. And so we do not want to engage in anything that will cause us to have the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah invites us to believe. Iman. Tu'minuna billah. And then he says, Wa rasulihi and to and believe in his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is again not just to say that we believe in this man, this the greatest of human being that walked the earth, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we believe in him as a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we believe that he came with uh, you know, guidance for humanity, and that's all. And then when certain occasions come up, we sing his praise and we, we talk beautiful things about him. But true belief in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to follow him. He came to lead us to the path of righteousness. He came to teach us what is right from wrong. And he came to, to guide us as to how we can become the best of Allah's creation. And so when we say we believe in him, it is not just lip service. But we should follow him in everything that he did. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Verily, in the Messenger of Allah, in the Prophet of Allah, is a perfect example for you. 
So the way he behaved as a husband, we need to behave the same way. And the way he behaved as a father, we need to behave the same way. And the way he conducted himself in terms of his prayers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how he humbled himself and submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to follow him and practice the same way. The way he dealt with his neighbors, the way he cared for other people, and was given preference to them over himself. Al Ithar, that you know, the, the, he, he, even though he did not have, he would try to find to give to other people. This is how we demonstrate true faith or belief in the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not just saying that we believe. And there are so many people in the world today one billion plus Muslims who say, yes, we believe that this is the last messenger. We believe that he is a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to following him and what he has brought, they're just a minority of the Muslims who really follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to something very serious. If we accept it, he says that there will be no, no loss. You will only be profiting. And so the first thing that he said, that you believe in him, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that you believe in his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ and that you struggle with what Allah has given unto you. Allah has given you resources. He has given you wealth. He has given you everything that we have in life. It came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاثُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs all the wealth that is in the heavens and the earth. And so Allah says he wants us to struggle with the resources that he has given unto us. The wealth that Allah has blessed us with, Allah does not want us to hoard it and to keep it for ourselves, but we should use it for the benefit of ourselves and the benefit of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants us to use it in the right way. And scholars look at resources not limiting it to our wealth, monetary resources, but they look at it and try to include more than that. Because if we look at ourselves very carefully, we would see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in so many different ways. Some of us are stronger than others. Some are more intelligent than others. And we can go on and on. Each one of us has a special gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants us to struggle with that which he has given unto us to benefit the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ And struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the resources that Allah has blessed you with and with your personal selves. And we saw, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, if we go back to the time of our forefathers, our predecessors, if we go back to that time, we would see that there were people who really struggled with their personal selves. They were willing to give up their own lives for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many times that we complain. You know, someone asks us to do something, and we say, we don't have time. 
when we say, you know, I, I have spent so much time already on the outside. I need to sleep. I need to do this or I need to do that. And people don't have time. People don't want to exert themselves to struggle in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You ask people to come to the masjid to, to help in the building of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find only a handful. You ask people to help in taking care of the needy and the poor, and you find only a few. Where is the struggle with our personal selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When it comes to educating our masses, you bring children to the madrasa, weekend schools, afternoon schools, and you find that there might be only one teacher with so many kids. How can you control them? How can you really teach them? How can you really give them what they ought to have? Whereas everyone else is sleeping at home or taking care of something else. It's very difficult for people to struggle with their personal selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah says, He is inviting us. What is it that I want you to do? I want you to believe in me, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want you to believe in my messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want you to struggle with the resources that I have given to you and with your personal selves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and he says, ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ he, he says, this is best for you if you but knew. A lot of times, people don't know what is best for them. You think that what you are doing is the best thing for you. But Allah is telling us that He knows what is best for us. And the best thing for us is to really believe in him and his prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to continue the struggle with everything that Allah has bestowed unto us. What is it that Allah will give to us? Even though he's telling us that this is best for us, he now tells us, and we, and we, and we check, if we check the Quran, and we check the traditions of our prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we would see that every time Allah asks us to do something, He gives us something in return. Every time He asks us to do something, pray, you get something in return. Fast, and you get something in return. Give charity, you get something in return. You may not see it immediately. The unfortunate thing of with mankind today is that we want to see instantaneous results. When we do something, we want results instantly. But it may not be the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us in this world and He promises us in the world hereafter. And if you don't get it in this world, be assured that you will get it in the world hereafter. So every time Allah asks us to do something, He says that He will give us something in return. And here He says that if you believe in Him, and you believe in His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you struggle with your wealth and with your personal selves, even though it's the best thing for you, Allah promises something else. He says, I will forgive you your sins. Allah is saying that He will forgive us our sins. 
Remember, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, all of us, we make mistakes and we need the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kullu bani Adam khatta. Every son of Adam, every one of us make mistakes. Wa khayr al tawwabun. And the best of those who make mistakes are the ones who turn to Allah and they seek forgiveness for their mistakes. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us that He will forgive us for our mistakes. And that's what we need. We need forgiveness for the wrong things that we have done in life. Because when we ask for forgiveness and we are being forgiven, we purify ourselves. And only the pure ones will enter the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ones who will be successful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Man Allah bi qalbin salim. The one who returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a son, the pure heart. You, you, you have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a pure state. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful indeed is he who purifies himself. And the one who is corrupting himself, he will be unsuccessful. So we need to make sure that constantly we are asking for forgiveness and we are being forgiven for our sins because the only way we will enter paradise is when we are in that state of purity. So tahara or, you know, purifying ourselves, it is not just washing our hands and washing our faces and washing our feet and, and, and when we come for salah, when we come for prayer. But we have tahara badaniya and tahara ruhiya or nafsiya when we are looking to purify the inner self. To make sure that we free ourselves of hatred and enmity and malice. And that we only are involved in, in love and compassion and kindness and doing good things. This is the state that we want to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He will forgive us our sins. This is what He's promising us. And He will enter us into paradise, into gardens beneath which rivers flow. He will give us beautiful mansions. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is a trade that is profitable. In business, in, we have a lot of business people. You start up a business, of course, you start a business you don't want to lose. But there are many people who went bankrupt in their businesses. So there is that risk that you will gain or you will lose. And with the present climate today, many businesses are running at a loss. But in this case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I am guaranteeing you that you will not lose. Once you believe in me and you believe in, in my Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you struggle with your wealth and with your personal selves, then you will certainly have forgiveness and you will be entered into mansions you will be in, in, in gardens beneath which rivers flow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising us this type of profit or gains. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us be upright. Let us demonstrate that commitment in our faith, let us always show that 
we sincerely believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a man who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked, O Prophet of Allah, tell me something about this deen, something comprehensive that I will not have to ask after anyone after you have said it to me. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says to the man, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقِمْ Say you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then be upright, be straightforward. Demonstrate commitment to your faith, to your iman. And so there is iman, there is faith in every aspect of our lives. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Imanu bid'un wa sab'una shu'ba. Iman is some 73 to 77 branches. A'laha qawlu la ilaha illa Allah. Wa adnaha imatatul adha anit tariq. The highest of its branches is to say there is none to be worshipped but Allah. And the lowest of its branches is to remove something from the pathway that will harm people. And it can be the simplest of things. You see something in the street that if someone walks, he will slip on it. You remove it. That's part of your Iman. Faith, it's about how you treat people, your neighbors, your brothers and sisters, your mothers and fathers, your sons and daughters, how husbands treat wives and how wives treat their husbands. It's all about faith, Iman. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we need to show strong commitment, that steadfastness in our faith, in every aspect of our lives. It is not only when we pray, because many Muslims today have that misconception. They are the most humble of people when they stand up for prayer. And when the prayer is finished, they are the worst of animals. And so we need to be careful as to how we be, be, behave, not only in our salah, but in every aspect of our lives. So let us accept this trade and business transaction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to. Let us sincerely believe in Allah and His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let us struggle with everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given unto us. Our wealth, our resources, and our personal selves in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that we will always be, you know, expecting that Prophet, that we will be forgiven for our sins, that we will enter gardens beneath which rivers flow, that we will be placed in beautiful mansions in paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He give us goodness, good in this life and good in the life hereafter. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever bless us and guide us onto the straight path. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رضوان الله عليه من يوم الدين أما بعد my dear brothers and my dear sisters when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us about what we will get out of this business transaction, out of this trade, He ends the ayah by saying, This is the, the greatest of victory. When you think about success, and you think that you have a million dollar in the bank and you are, you know, you're okay in life and you drive a Mercedes Benz and you have a beautiful home. That's not the greatest of success. 
Allah says that when you have forgiveness and when you entered into paradise, that's the greatest of success. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And if you look at, if you look at the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not promise us first of all that we will have Jannah and then we will have forgiveness. He says you will have forgiveness and then you will have Jannah because without being pure, you will not be able to enter the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ This is the greatest of victory. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Not equal are the dwellers of the hellfire and the dwellers of paradise. The dwellers of paradise, they are the ones who are successful. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ And he who is saved from the fire of hell and being placed in the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the one who has been successful. So success, it is not what we have in this dunya, but when success is if we are being saved from the fire of hell and admitted into the paradise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, Allah does not only promise us in this trade that we will only have in the hereafter, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَسْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you adhere to this bargain, you take your part, you do your part, that you will not only have forgiveness and entered into paradise, but you will also have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, and you will be victorious. And it is something that you will love. وَأُخْرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَسْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Something that you will love. It is what he says, Nasrum min Allah. You will have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa fathun qareeb. And you will also have victory. And the scholars say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers here to the, 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 the Muslims' victory over Persia and Rome. That they were victorious. They defeated the Persians and the Romans. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising. That if you are really true believers, and you really struggle, that there is none in this world who can defeat you. And we saw it in the lives of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They struggled they sincerely believed. And so they were able to take Islam from one corner of the globe to another corner. And even though at most of the times that they were a minority, they were always victorious because they had the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we, we're a billion plus in the, Muslim, in, in the world today. And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, we are you know, in a, in a sad state. A very sad state because there is no true commitment to Iman, to faith, to belief in Allah and the messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we are not willing to struggle with what Allah has given unto us. And so we see the Muslims in all parts of the world that they are, instead of being independent, they are dependent upon others. And Muslims are being controlled. And Muslims compromise. And they make what is lawful unlawful. And what is unlawful, they make it lawful. 
This is the state of Muslims today. And so my dear brothers and my dear sisters, let us accept this bargain. Let us accept this trade. Believe sincerely in Allah. Believe in his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Struggle with our wealth and with our personal selves. And inshallah we will have forgiveness from Allah. We will have Jannah in the world hereafter. And inshallah we will have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do in this world. Halal things, good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us that he gives us good in this life and good in the life hereafter, and that he saves us from the torment of hellfire. لَقَدْ أَمَرَنَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ حَيْثُ قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتُهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأرضى اللهم من خلفائه الأربعة أبي بكر وأمر وثمان وعليم ونسبة الباقي المبشرين بالجنة ونسائر الصحابة ونتابعين ومن تبعهم بسان لا يوم الدين اللهم عز إسلام والمسلمين اللهم نور قلوبنا بنور الإيمان وثبت قلوبنا على الدين الإسلام ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي ذكم لكم تذكرون فذكر الله لا نعمهم واشكروه على آلائه ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسنون أقم الصلاة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر